I'm Susanne Klein, and I would like to uh, talk about uh, some e um, emerging youth in contemporary Japan. I'd like to uh, open up with a statement um, that is, um, can you go back? I'm sorry, I pushed. Um, rather than working in a big company in the city, we've chosen to do a work that com contributes to the region and enjoy a life together with our local friends. Eat safe and delicious food, earn a stable income and live happily with our families." End of quote. So I'm going to talk about people uh, in their 20s and 30s who choose to relocate from urban areas to the countryside in search uh, for more purpose in life and a greater life quality. Depopulation uh, is actually the norm across uh, rural and small town municipalities in Japan. But recently, and this has been enforced by the Great East Japan Earthquake in 2011, um, people, some remote locations have actually attracted uh, young migrants. For example, there's a very famous case in Shimane Prefecture in Western Japan. Uh, we have a remote island called Ama Town, and uh, this um, place has only 2,400 residents, but has managed to attract more than 200 migrants, mostly in the 20s and 30s, from urban areas recently. We have uh, also similarly in Tokamachi City, in Niigata Prefecture, an influx of uh, young and quite well-educated uh, migrants um, in uh, recent years. And Ishinomaki City in Miyagi Prefecture, which is one of uh, the most badly afflicted um, areas uh, by the disaster in 2011, has had a record number of volunteers, some of who have decided to stay on or commute between Tokyo and Ishinomaki. There's a similar story going on in Dikuzen Takata City in Iwate Prefecture. So you can see that uh, this phenomenon is happening all over Japan. So I'd like to talk uh, about lifestyle migration today. Um, that is migration that is uh, spurred by non-economic factors mostly. Uh, a characteristic of this uh, migration style is uh, ephemerality. That is, people are looking for a better life, um, a better work-life balance. Um, they, they're trying to uh, achieve non-material affluence and uh, a meaningful life in general. So uh, if they cannot achieve this um, boost in uh, life quality, they tend to move on to other places. Um, apart from that, uh, obviously self-realization and uh, the aim, uh, aspir aspiration for purpose in life, ikigai in Japanese, is quite a big factor here. So my uh, research project is qualitative in nature. Um, I usually um, refer to uh, interviews and participant observation, um, sanyo kansatsu in Japanese. Uh, that is basically I go out to places um, talk to people, um, try to um, join in activities in order to get a sense of uh, what values and lifestyles people have. Um, this study focuses on migrants between 20 and 40 uh, in Shimane Prefecture, Niigata, Miyagi and Iwate Prefecture. And I focused on people between 20 and 40. Previous studies in lifestyle migration have uh, mostly focused on people after finishing work and retiring and moving to um, rural areas. So uh, the innovative um, feature of this study is first of all this age, young age group and also um, I actually um, try to you know, um, research people all across Japan. So uh, it's, a, it's a quite a big sample. I've talked to um, 30 people uh, in depth now so um, I'd like to share two uh, case studies with you to give you an insight why people choose to relocate. First, I'm going to talk about Abe Hiroshi, who is in his mid-30s, and he's a graduate from uh, the Department of Engineering, Kyoto University. He used to work for a well-known uh, car manufacturer in uh, Aichi Prefecture before deciding to abandon his conventional employment and uh, relocate to Ama Town, uh, the remote island I mentioned before. He has set up uh, a company with uh, a couple of other migrants in, in the 20s and 30s, uh, a group called Meguri Noa. Uh, and this group uh, is active in, uh, ma mainly in three areas, regional revitalization, um, education, and media. 
So the idea is um, for the company to make a social contribution by boosting the local confidence uh, in the attractions and strong points uh, of uh, that island and hometown. But at the same time, they also hope to attract non-local migrants to the area, both as visitors but also as um, long-term migrants. And others' um, s heightened sense of uh, life satisfaction can be seen from this statement. Quote, right now, I enjoy every day so much I cannot describe it. End of quote. Um, so, although Abe has relocated to this remote island, he has been moving around um, both uh, in physical terms but also in virtual terms because he makes frequent trips um, throughout Japan to um, talk about his activities and network with other groups. But also, um, does he have a very strong um, presence on the internet using social media? and um, uh, to share his experiences and um, uh, network with other people with sh uh, similar concerns. The second case um, I'd like to talk about here uh, is Tada Tomoyoshi, uh, who is a graduate also from Kyoto University, Faculty of Letters. Uh, he used to work uh, as a company employee in Osaka in uh, finance consulting for s uh, several years. And then in 2008, the Lehman shock happened and he, s he decided to abandon conventional employment and move to Tokamachi City in Niigata Prefecture with his family. He is now doing something completely different. That is, uh, he is now engaging in organic farming and regional revitalization. So um, we can say that on the one hand he is uh, engaging in manual labor uh, in a very classic sense, but at the same time he also uh, has a very strong uh, inter uh, internet presence. Apart from his Facebook account, uh, he writes a regular blog about his uh, activities in the small mountain village uh, called Ikitani, where he has uh, moved to. And um, we could say that his lifestyle is actually going beyond the classic urban and rural divide. So he's moving around both in physical but also in a virtual, t a virtual um, dimension by using uh, social media a lot. So we can say there's an increased interest in the good life in Japanese contemporary society and this has been enforced by uh, the disaster in 2011. We also have a trend towards clusters and networks. That is, people with similar values tend to get together and um, share the experiences. We also have lifestyles beyond the urban and rural divide, so people uh, tend to uh, move to and fro and there's no clear-cut divide anymore. So we could actually talk about rural spaces in a novel manner, that is, previous research has focused on rural areas as an open category, um, that is a place where you can uh, engage in social experiments. Uh, there's also been the term a post-productivist countryside. So uh, you have countryside being assigned a new meaning after um, ma classical manual labor. And um, we also have the notion radical rurality. Personally, I would like to uh, call for an envisioning countryside not um, as a polarized opposite to urban areas, but I'd like to see it as a coexistence um, with urban areas because if you look at these um, cases of migrants, they are moving a lot uh, between spaces and there's no clear-cut division anymore. Another innovative feature of this study is that I bring in the concept of subjective well-being uh, into this lifestyle migration. So, um, I'm obviously, migrants uh, have their personal preferences and um, lifestyle choices that, um, have a, that have been a key factor in shaping the decision to relocate. But on the other hand, uh, the interpersonal uh, elements um, play a big role in uh, their well-being. So obviously uh, positive human relations, having a network with um, peers and other people makes a big difference apart from the physical and existential dimension of well-being. So, uh, and this brings us to the to this network, network factor I've referred uh, to before. Uh, that is, uh, a lot of these migrants actually um, ha have kind of neo-tribal elements 
gets in together in informal networks. Um, they, sh they share accommodation, they share offices, uh, and they also engage in barter in order to make up for the lack of um, disposable cash because they abandoned um, previous conventional employment. Uh, so we uh, could say that contractual groups uh, in the classical um, meaning, uh, such as companies, have been replaced by effectual tribes. And um, these are very, they tend to be very unstable and temporary in nature. And also, they tend to be um, not bound by geography. That is, people have um, nomad lifestyles, and they also rely heavily on social media, as I um, mentioned before. So I would like to uh, argue that f doing fieldwork as a researcher with a variety of, of uh, people and in, and in a variety of places also constitutes a source of ikigai, or purpose in life. Because in order to get um, valuable data, you obviously need to uh, establish a relation of trust with uh, interviewees. And this in, this in turn calls for intensive interaction with um, many various different actors. So this is a picture from a uh, fieldwork I did with disaster volunteers in Dikusen Takata, Iwate Prefecture, uh, in the summer of 2012. I'd like to argue that well-being, subjective well-being, is made up of three factors. Good life quality, and this actually is a picture from uh, my favorite uh, restaurant in uh, Kesenuma, um, a, a Japanese fish restaurant. Uh, and uh, second, obviously, enthusiasm for work. That is, doing a work that you personally deem uh, meaningful. Uh, apart from, uh, and, and this obviously uh, exceeds uh, economic factors. And also, last but not least, positive human relations. So what is my, uh, mes my message to potential students now? I'd like to invite you to join us at Hokkaido University in doing fascinating fieldwork in various regions across Japan. I personally believe that sustainable research requires human growth, and this you can achieve by interacting uh, with a variety of actors. I'd like to invite you to study at the most beautiful campus in Japan, but at the same time, I'd like to encourage you to get out to other places beyond university, because I'd like to, to ask you to keep in mind that academia may be really inspiring and exciting, but it's only a very small part of this world. Thank you very much. <laughs>